here we are at section 8.3 part 3 so this is the main thing that you're wanting to do with 8.3 and it's actually using exponential functions a little bit of logs in order to model certain certain uh, situations so these are very good for some real life applications and including it into what you'd use in everyday life here we go so what's the purpose we want to solve word problems involving exponential functions. Pretty straightforward. Now I'm gonna go through a lot of different examples. There's, I believe, like 20 different slides in this video. So I'm gonna be whipping through a little bit quick. Lots of these equations you've seen before. So I'm gonna go through something like this. I give you the equation. I'm gonna tell you what all the variables are and then solve an example. It's gonna go really quick, really fast. If there's a part that's not making sense, pause it, please. I just don't want to make this video super long because it'll take a little bit. Here's my equation for interest rate. You'll notice some variables are similar. A is the future value. So this is dealing with money. So what's the future value of money? P is the present value of the money. You've got R as a rate. R is always going to be the rate. N is the number of compounds per year. T is time. So let's try this out. Here's a common question. How long will it take $5,000 to grow into $8,000 at a rate of 3.6% compounded semi-annually? Semi meaning two, so two per year. Um, the, the equations I'm gonna give you. So all of these ones are on your formula sheet. So putting all these into the equation, future value is 8,000, present value is 5,000, Rate is 3.6, but it's you want it as a percent. And then N is 2, because it's compounded twice per year. Do a little bit of algebra, I get this. Using logs, I can make this a whole lot easier. No more guessing. So take the log of both sides. Using the power law, bring 2T out front. And then divide by 2 log 1.018. Or just that. Plug it in, divide by 2. There's your time. It takes... 13.17 years to be able to solve this. Don't forget the units on this. I'm not gonna be super picky, but the units are important. Next one, population growth and decay. You've seen this. This was in um, chapter seven. Same equation. So here it is as a reminder, future population, initial population, rate. Um, the rate being positive if you grow, negative if you decay, N is the increment of rate, so how long does it take for that rate to occur? Is it every year? Is it every two years? Is it every week? What is that? T, time. Always time. So we've got a battery that loses 5% of its power each day. So notice each day, meaning N is 1. How long does it take until 20% remains? So I want the future value to be 20 and the initial value is 100. I start off with 100%. My rate is 5%, but I'm subtracting it because I'm losing that amount. Do algebra, take a log, bring the T out front, divide by log, plug that in your calculator. Again, I'm doing the algebra really quick, but the process for that you should be able to do pretty easy. If you understand everything up till now, algebra is no problem. Again, notice days. The unit for this is days, not years. That'd be a great battery if it lasted for years. Half-life. Now I know for half-life problems, I showed you you could use the rates starting with the last equation, but because it specifically will say in the question half-life, that should automatically tell you the base is a half. So you can just remember something like this. This equation is not on the formula sheet. The 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 decay and growth equation will, but this one should be pretty straightforward. So again, future population, initial population, increment of rate, and time. Again, you've seen this. Same with doubling and tripling. It just tells you the base. You could do it from um, the growth and decay equation, but if you're going to remember this, that's fine. Just that this won't be on the equation sheet. Again, what each of these things are, you've seen this, boring, boring stuff. 
Let's try an example of this. So we got a population that increases five-fold every two weeks. That means five-fold just means five times. It's five times as big. And I want to know how many weeks will it take for it to be 30 times or 30-fold. So my, my equation is this. I start off with one. It increases five times as much. So my base is five. T over two because it occurs every two weeks and I want it to equal 30 times in the end. So I should get from population of one to 30. If it doesn't tell you the initial population, normally just put one. Or one can also be 100%, so it doesn't really matter. Take the log of both sides, bring the power up front, isolate T, put in your calculator, bum, 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 you get 4.23 weeks. So that's, that's the process. The algebra, again, you can do that. Richter scale. You saw one in the last uh, one of the sections, 8.3 part something. So this is the equation you're going to get on the formula sheet. M is the magnitude, A is the amplitude of the waves. Um, so if you've got a, uh, an earthquake, the earth moves up and down. This is a, a surface wave that you have. So A is going to be the amplitude. You might see this as the intensity as well. It can be similar to that, but more often you'll see A. A naught is just a value you don't need to know because it's always going to cancel out. So if we've got an earthquake of magnitude 8.3 and it has an aftershock that's 20 times less intense, so it's 20 times less intense, what, what is the magnitude? So before I can actually solve this, because 20 is comparing the initial earthquake and the next one, it's comparing the amplitudes or the, the intensity of it. So I need to first isolate A by itself to be able to compare those two. So I'm gonna do some algebra here, do 10 to the power of to cancel out that log, and then I can isolate A. So this is something, again, you should be able to do this pretty quickly without a problem, hopefully. Now if I'm gonna compare these two, two A values, I divide them like this, a naughts cancel. So this is a common equation. When you're comparing values or amplitudes, you need to get something like this. There's going to be a question in the textbook that assumes you know this equation, and I wanted to specifically show where it comes from. So this is how you algebraically get there. But this, this equation in the box is not given to you. I'm going to give you the m equals log a over a naught. So you just need to know this quick process to get to this. Not too bad. So now I can use this equation and solve it. So I'm saying the difference between these is 20 times. So I've got 20 equals and my bigger earthquake, I put that up top and I want to solve for M2. So with, uh, with exponents, I subtract the powers, take a log of both sides, bring the power up front, solve for M, plug it in your calculator, done, algebra. You get your answer. It's not actually 7.0 stop. It's a decimal, but I rounded it. Decibels. So this looks familiar to the last one. It is just slightly different. So decibel um, decibels refers to sound, how, how intense a sound is or how loud something is. So decibel, that's beta. If you don't know your Greek letters, that's the Greek letter beta. It's the capital. Uh, I is the intensity of sound, and I naught is, again, a constant. It's, it's, a, it's a set value that you, again, don't need to know. It doesn't really matter. So we want to compare between two decibels. Again, using this equation, I, I can't figure out how much louder one intensity is than the other without isolating I. So I'm going to go through the exact same process here of solving for I doing some algebra to isolate I. Now I can say how much larger something is by comparing the two. So I get an equation that looks very similar to the last one. Again, it's assumed that you know how to do this, so you need to know how to algebraically get there. So follow these steps, you should have no problem. So let's actually solve the problem. Here's our difference in intensities. I just simply plug in the decibel numbers and then 
solve it. So this is, it's 19,952.6 times bigger, or more loud, or the intensity is more, uh, is this many times bigger. pH scale. Again, these are all things that can come up. These are very, very common. So here is the um, equation for the pH scale. Again, P, the pH scale just tells you how acidic something is. So comparing between acids and bases, you need to know what is the pH scale. So pH is just the pH value. It's a number between 1 and 7, I think, is normally the, or 14. 1 and 14, I think. Um, the um, the H plus in the square brackets is the concentration of hydrogen ions. You don't really need to know what that is. You just need to know what it is to plug it in the equation. So if we ask you how many times more acidic, or how many more times do you have H plus concentration in your in your whatever solution, um, and it gives you two pH values. Again, I need to do this equation and rearrange for the concentration of hydrogen ions. Very similar to what you've seen before. So I need to isolate that. So cancel out the negative, 10 to the power of both these sides, 10 to the power of log cancels out, and I get here is my equation for the concentration. So if I want to compare between two concentrations, I just divide this equation. And on the right-hand side, notice I have two negative powers. I can just flip those to get them positive powers. So here's your comparison equation. Let's actually solve this problem. So comparing the two concentrations, I plug in the two values for this, for my pHs. Solve it 631 times as acidic. So there you go. That's the end. I know that was a lot of um, examples, rapid fire coming right at you. So hopefully that all made sense. The math behind it wasn't too bad. It's just a lot of new variables. So just get familiar with those. You'll see those examples and those equations used in the practice problems. So I just realized that somehow the, the ending of my first video cut off but while I explained what, what you need to do. Somehow they must be figuring out that I'm, I'm doing this and that I'm sending videos in the past. Here's my master plan. I need you to like, subscribe, and share my, my channel with all of your friends. I need this video of dividing by zeros will result in a disaster. And I can't do that unless my channel is the most famous. So I need you to do this right now. They're here. I need you. It's very important. Without this, the world will end up doing like this. No. No, what are you doing? No! We need to talk about this! Stop! We need to save the world! The world is doing it! I can save this! I can